Hello. Hey. I'm glad I'm in the right on the right link. <laughs> Either that or we're both on the wrong one. Hi, Jason. How's it going? Hi. Does anyone know if we're expecting anyone from the US side today? Gary's away, and I think Dano can't make this time. Okay. So I think that's a no. Might just be us three then. I'll do one more minute, and then we can start. Ah, here we go. Two at once. Hey, hello, everyone. Hello. Good hello. morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Seems like it might just be um, Australians today, so I'll get started. And again, just loading the screen. Ah, you should be able to see that. Let me know if you can't. Um, as you would have seen, this meeting has been recorded. There's an antitrust notice. Oh, can you see the screen now? It seems to take a long time to load then. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, good. Um, there's an antitrust notice. So please have a look at that if you're not familiar with it. Um, yeah, I think that's all the relevant housekeeping. Uh, not a huge amount on the agenda today. Does anyone have any general announcements? Okay. Uh, the roadmap. I think it looks like this was updated fairly recently. Um, So I don't know if there's anything people want to go over at all. Shut up if you do, but Shanghai Upgrade is about to happen on the 12th of April. Um, these things are definitely happening. Um, talk about that in the release section. Um, RPC improvements enhancing, announcements and improvements in lunch. Sure, what's going on with that? Oh, yeah, the streaming stuff is definitely happening. Um, and then there's Cancun, this quarter coming up, EOF perhaps, modularization of BASU, there's stuff going on with that. Um, not sure about them. Oh, that is this. I'm not sure about the rest, actually. Does anyone know anything about the rest of the roadmap? Or got any comments generally about the roadmap? I just, just related to the modularization piece, I just put back to the agenda under work updates, there's a PR in review for metrics using dagger if you refresh yeah 
Um, so I think that one's still waiting for review. So that's kind of um, one piece of the modularization part. Yeah. If anyone else has a look. I think I saw Justin had previously shared um, some notes or something in the wiki. Uh, I presume that might have been in a different contributor call because it was maybe a few weeks ago now. Uh, that's the only other sort of output I've seen so far, apart from this uh, PR. Cool. Uh, any other comments about the roadmap? All right. So release updates. Yeah, so we had 23.1.2 released on the 23rd of March um, after a few days of burning. Um, this was quite a big one, actually, because it included the bonsai refactor, um, which seems to be going well so far. Um, we're getting positive feedback. Uh, from various users, not just about the stability with the bonsai, but also performance as well. So I think there was some performance enhancements related to that, and maybe in addition, maybe, I'm not sure about that. Um, I couldn't tell you why it might be performing better, but um, maybe some, and if, if anyone else can, please chime in. Um, it also was the, sh the Shanghai mainnet, um release or Chappella release um so it's got the config main net for the fork on the 12th of april um and it also fixed and um, a bug that kept cropping up kind of thing semi-related to bonsai so maybe the refactor helped that as well but basically when you did a backward sync um so this is relevant for proof of stake networks when you do the backward sync, you would and you were given a um, hash of some uh, the chain that you already had, then sometimes that would cause an issue. Um, so there's loads of good stuff, good fixes in this release. And then more recently, RocksDB eight has been released, and this includes a PR which. Um, Karim and uh, Mesiam worked on, I believe, uh, which could be maybe even a 2x speed improvement um, or up to a 2x speed improvement, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, so that's really great. I think the code to enable this is on main now um, and the upgrade to RocksDB 8. So it should be going in the next release. Uh, I'm not entirely sure when or what form that will take, though. I think we're scared. We are scheduled another release before Shanghai hits on the 12th of April, but I don't know. We're also due a um, quarterly release, um, so I don't know if that's uh, going to go into the quarterly release or not. The Rocks TV changes potentially risky because it's a major update uh, so we'd need to take that into account but i'm sure if there's any discussion will take place on discord about that anyone got any comments about those or anything to add is the rocks db change just for performance is there any other improvements that we're getting from the upgrade yeah, I don't know. All, all, all I know about it is that it includes um, Perim and MSDN's code that basically, I can't remember what the actual change is now. I used to know. But um, there's a, that's a definite improvement for the way that we use it. But I, yeah, so I don't know. There might be other good things in, in that upgrade as well. It will help. Okay. I was going to ask, you said there's going to be another release before um, 
mind blank capella yeah like if we stick to the schedule there would be um so, yeah. so is there specific things for capella that need to be released or is it just release timing no capella is um is ready to go uh there's nothing that needs to be released for that so so i think the important thing would be any any release we do perform should be uh should not compromise the fork potentially so mm. it might be better to do like if we get if we want to release something especially this rocks db change it might be better to do like an rc release um yeah of some description so like an rc for the next quarterly release yeah that probably makes sense since the quarterly one's coming up as well yeah speaking of quarterly releases yes i see a proposal to do yes. something since it's with related to the release we'll, we'll skip to this for a sec so yeah um so i i suggested i kind of floated the idea on discord a week or two ago uh and i've written a quick proposal um so that people can comment or um or edit or have you on a date so please take a look at this um and add your thoughts um but essentially it's about replacing the quarterly and bi-weekly process that we follow at the moment with something closer to a monthly um release um so yeah the three problems uh, i think it will solve maybe there's there's more to this that, that people have as my this is just from my point of view um and from a couple of conversations so um yeah so there's long whenever we do the quarterly release it's on a long lived release branch which can cause problems with um like having to cherry pick code and things like that but at the very least it creates a overhead of maintenance um compared to like releasing from main um it seems the only advantage we really get from that is that we can uh delay breaking changes and, and give people like three months notice on that but we could still have that notice period without it needing to be like on a separate release branch for example um so there are ways around that um it's but three months does seem like a long time to wait for significant or breaking changes to be released. For example, the rocks to be thing. Um, so I think there were probably better ways we could deal with that. There's probably some things where we do still want to give yeah, a long, long notice period, but and there's nothing stopping us just doing announcing that and then doing it and uh, having some releases in between and then doing it. Um, also, from from the biweekly point of view. Uh, again, this is this is mostly my opinion, uh, so feel free to to challenge it. But two weeks seems like quite a fast release frequency for users. Um, obviously, they don't always have to do do that, but um, could impact um, enterprise users maybe more so than uh, solo stakers, for example. But um, having to do something with the software every two weeks, if you just kind of want it to be running and stable is uh potentially a burden there so it kind of feels like monthly is a, a nice in between um and yeah i won't go through the whole whole document but that just gives you kind of an intro and um yeah hopefully you can either discuss on discord or on the comments on here see what people think any comments about that um, you want to discuss now? So would this mean we don't release every two weeks? We go, we would go to monthly. And so if there I was a, a big breaking change, we would just say this is going to be in this release that's three months away from now. Uh, Yes, in essence, the, the way I'm kind of seeing it is like much more flexible rather than like a 
predefined schedule that's got like a certain date for a release. I think if there's problems we need to fix and release, then we should just do it and kind of go off schedule kind of thing. I, that's kind of what we the situation we're in now anyway. Um, although I guess two weeks is frequent enough that you can often bundle it into the next release anyway. Um, so I'm not saying we should only release once a month. Uh, like maybe it's two or three times a month if there's some bugs that we really need to fix. Uh, but it feels like it should be at least once a month. Otherwise, you get, you know, it. it's probably good to release the software <laughs> and get feedback from users and things like that at some sort of regular cadence. And the proposal is that monthly is a good cadence for that. Um, it's also quite similar to, I think, how some other clients released as well. Um, so in, in the sense that uh, the majority of our users that probably solo stakers, so they kind of maybe used to that release process as well. Um, I don't have any data to back that up, but <laughs> uh, this is very much a kind of um, just a draft proposal. We, we could definitely do some, some research potentially to back some of this up and figure out what's best for users. Um, is there about the people hold up before the releases at the moment? I'm just wondering if there's something else um, in quarter releases that we don't get with the monthly ones at the moment. Um, not based on any data. I think we kind of generally leave some major features um, to the quarterly ones and some users kind of um, delay uh, updating to the quarterly ones right now. So some of that might be kind of education and actually mentioning that the set goes through the same level of testing. But um, I think we also kind of hold back on some features right now um, out of the bi weekly ones. Yeah. So, um, so we say, uh, is the question whether some users don't update the RCs, for example, and therefore uh, um, maybe missing out on some features? or delaying when they get those features. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, partly. Um, I'm wondering if there's more to the quarterly um, release that we're not. Um, so one of, I'm just wondering if are some, do some people hold off and only update from quarterly releases at the moment? Oh, you mean, uh, yeah, yeah, so they only go for the big ones and don't do the, um, exactly. don't do the point release. Is that yeah, that? I have no idea. I have no idea. But the, the thing is, I think there's no semant like we don't really the the quarterly versus biweekly doesn't really tell you there's been some important features. Like for example, you know, this last release 23.1.2, that was just a, a bi-weekly release and it had like some really crucial features in like everyone's going to have to upgrade that to to follow mainnet for example um and it's also like potentially uh, a really important bonsai fix so um you know there's no kind of signal i don't think through the release cycle that this is an important release you know it's not like we do a major upgrade on the version or anything like that um there's no semantic kind of information in the release cycle, as far as I can tell. Um, and, and I don't think, uh, uh, although some riskier changes are put into the quarterly release, um, that, uh, you know, we don't I, don't, I don't think we actually are required to burn in, and there's no advantage to burning in the release for like longer than our normal burning period for a bi-weekly one. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, as far as I can tell when I've been looking at it, like the only reason for a, to do a quarter release would be to, if, to delay a feature going in to give people a notice period. Now, I guess the side effect of that might be that you, if you want to write the code for that um, change, but you, you've got to wait three months to notify, then you kind of have to arrange 
either leave it in a PR instead of on a um, release branch, which is a difference, or delay when you start the work, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Um, so th there might be some you know, impact to the way developers work with regards to that, which could be seen as a downside for sure. I think that's something we could work around. Um, we often use the feature um, toggle approach anyway. So I think that'll, yeah, that'll, that we could probably deal with that. And I think if there's, um, there is no quality releases, there'll be no um, comparing a more frequent release to a um, less frequent release. So I don't think there'll be that, I don't think that have, not having that comparison means that I think that hopefully people will just update on the uh, monthly release. Um, rather than skip them like maybe they have been doing the weekly um bi-weekly ones yeah that, that would be some interesting feedback to to understand if okay, yes, users but, are releasing for sure uh, sorry our um upgrading i don't know if there's a way we can tell without just asking them <laughs> So what's the time frame for this? Um, yeah. Do we need to make a decision quickly before we get locked into a quarterly release or does it not matter? So it's, it's probably a bit late for the upcoming quarterly release, um, which if we follow the normal pattern would start soon and we'd probably do it, aim to do it released by the end of April, I think. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, so maybe after that one would be a good good time to start. Um, but obviously, we want to give plenty of time for feedback about the proposal as well. Yeah, I think twenty three point four has to be a quarter quarterly release because the right is just around the corner. But we could, like, if we went to monthly releases, we could then have twenty three point five, for example, could be a monthly release coming after that quarterly one. Yeah. Yeah. And we still have the advantage of not having to um, maintain that an old series of releases if we needed to, if we had the release took the quarterly release took out longer or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, there's definitely some probably finer details to work out around hot fixes and, and things like that. And and the, the thing that I've noted down to do. Um, is uh, come up with a deprecation policy um, because, yeah, the, that's something we need to kind of agree on, I think. Um, Dano has, has given some feedback that he thinks that the notification for certain changes should still be called uh, like three months. Um, so, yeah, just like figuring out. I, I'd like to understand why and how we can make that decision about certain changes. And like, I'd like the policy to be as simple as possible, but maybe we need to like have a special case for certain things. Because um, I think three months is probably quite long for any breaking change, but like maybe there's certain ones that where we do need to do it. Um, but it'd be good to understand the reasoning behind all of that. Yeah, like the, you know, changing the JDK version, that mm -hmm. requires a fair bit of preparation. So you don't want to, you know, as a user be hit by that one out of the blue. But if it's, you know, a minor change to an API that's easy to add the CLI parameter to fix it, well, maybe that doesn't require three months of, um, you know, yeah. lead, lead time. That's a really good point. It doesn't have to be the same for every feature. It could actually be that some require longer um, notes than others. I think at the moment yeah. it was three months for um, everything. Yeah, I think things just end up kind of. Well, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I guess you know, like if you had a quarterly release coming up, um, like say for example, this Rocks DB change, you know, that's only just been released, so now is like the earliest we could have notified anyone. Um, so. Do we go three months from now or do we is a month from now okay because that's still in the kind of rc going through the rc um quarterly part of the cycle is uh, the rocks, things like that is the rocks Sorry. db change a breaking change or just we think there might be some risk attached 
Uh, I don't know if it's breaking. I, uh, I'm not sure. There's nothing to say that I've seen to say it is, but I guess that at least falls under the risky category. Um, yeah. But yeah, but definitely, yeah, things like like Dan says, like APIs and things like that. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I, it probably makes sense that we shouldn't reduce the period that people might be used to already until un, unless we kind of find out that, that everyone is okay with with it being less than that but yeah we'd have to do some research i think to find that out cool. yeah so that, there's kind of two separate things right one is can we go with a monthly re release cadence instead of the bi-weekly and then the second one is well how did, how much lead time do we need to give people for the breaking changes and we could go to monthly releases and still keep the three monthly lead time for all breaking changes and then there's a separate conversation around all of the breaking changes only a small breaking change could we reduce that lead time that we give people? yeah exactly exactly yeah i don't i don't I, i'm not sure there is it when it's talking about like changing our own apis and things like that i'm not sure whether there's any advantage to producing that to less than three months really um I, I, the main thing i'm thinking about is that that we don't have to require something like a rocks db upgrade or something to be three months uh, but i don't think that's the case at the moment to be fair but yes it all needs to be defined um but hopefully kept fairly light touch and simple Any other comments about this? All right. Uh, so I'll jump back to, oh, we did talk about the modularization actually, didn't we? Yes. Uh, we can skip over that. Um, so the next APAC call in uh, about a month is, uh, on a public holiday for Australia, since I think the only people on this call are in Australia, we are suggesting that we cancel that one. Any objections to that? I will put that proposal in the Discord channel as well, just to make sure that we catch everyone, including people who are not on this call. But yeah, my proposal will be that we cancel it. Cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, this one, uh, as you may have experienced or read about, there was some GitHub Actions shenanigans started a couple of weeks ago, I think, um, where basically uh, there, there was, I think, from what Rai said, there was a some sort of limit in GitHub, but they never enforced it, and then they started enforcing it. So there wasn't like an announcement or anything. But we, at a hyperledger level, or, uh, with our account there, we're limited to twenty concurrent runners um, for GitHub Actions, and so I think that started. At roughly the same time, we also increased our usage of GitHub Actions by enabling the merge queue. I'm not sure whether <laughs> one one kind of sent the other over, but but based on the uh, based on the feedback from some of the other Hyperledger projects, it sounded like it was maybe just coincidental timing because uh, they were having problems as well. Even after we moved some of our GitHub Actions to our own runners um separate from the hyperledger account um so yeah i just wanted to mention that and um if you see anything weird with github actions i think the issue is kind of still ongoing to some extent so what's happened so far is i think gary set up some runners uh i guess owned by consensus um to get around this problem um 
we had, I think we've got at least three of them running. Um, I don't know exactly the details of the set of whether we uh, exclusively use those or whether we end up kind of sharing them in a pool or anything like that. But um, I think, yeah, it, it, we had to turn, when we had the actions all kind of getting queued up and they were taking like hours to complete uh, because of all the other projects trying to do the same thing as well. That effectively meant the merge queue was preventing merges because the merge queue has a uh, a limit on how long something can be in the queue. So it was kicking things out of the queue that had been in there like 30 minutes or something like that. Um, so we had to disable the merge queue in order to get things through. Now that we've got those extra runners, maybe we could enable it again. Um, not sure. Uh, don't know the current state of the runners. I think there were some issues with permissions and things like that, uh, which I'm sure we could fix, but I don't know whether this is a permanent solution or whether we need to kind of figure out a more permanent solution. But if, if anyone knows any more about it, please uh, speak up. I don't know anything more about it, but do we need to know more about it? it like. You know, if Gary set up these runners, do we need to ask Gary to just write up a quick thing about what we need to know about the runners? Yeah, we probably just need an update from Gary about what the plan mm -hmm. is with that. Um, yeah. And on the merge queue, there was that um, feature request, I guess, about not running all of the actions and checks again if they've already been run and that. You know, nothing else was ahead of it in the queue. Yeah. Uh, I think we'd want that to be implemented before we turn merge queue back on again. Because otherwise, I don't think it's actually saving us. Or, you know, in the worst case scenario, it's using more TI credits rather than less. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you still get the gain of, like, you can just kind of put it in the queue and forget about it, potentially. <laughs> Uh, that's the idea anyway, but then, um, but yes, we might just, it might just take longer overall to actually get into, um, into the main branch. Um, but yeah, the downside at the moment is you always run the actions again, even if there's nothing else in the queue, which just seems, yeah, a bit pointless. Yeah, and the, the GitHub actions and the Circle CI checks as well. How does it do that as well? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else on that? I'll put a link to the. There's some feedback on the GitHub Actions um, beta uh, where that was. I think it was like the second most popular feature request. So. Pretty sure they'll end up doing it. I don't know what the time scale would be though. The first most popular, I think, was the message thing where you, you're able to set your message, you merge, squash and merge message for the queue, which was some functionality we lost when we had it enabled. Okay. Um, uh, Thanks, there's a little link here. So this probably has links to what I just talked about. Yeah, I think it's that link at the top um, still runs all the checks and queries. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. 
Excellent. Well, I'll just leave this because this has everything. All right. Any other business? Or open forum or future topics? I've got something for the open forum. Oh. Uh, it, call out for volunteers, I guess, if anyone who doesn't already um, do the job of facilitating this call, if anyone would like to volunteer. We could share the load around a bit. Deep knowledge of BASU and all current work streams not required. The most important requirement is that you turn up to the call. Sure. Anything else? Right. I think we are done. Thank you all. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, Simon. Thank you all. See you later. Thank you.